Now, when we are analyzing thermodynamic processes, we are often asked to assess what is going on with the transfer of mass and energy across the boundaries of a particular system. On this basis of analysis, we are able to classify the system as one of three types. We have either have an open, a closed, or an isolated system. In this problem, we are given a list of systems and we are asked to classify them in, into the appropriate category, but only two of the three categories that they can be, and that's open and closed. So we're not really concerned right now with isolated systems. So again, the first thing we must do is get a grasp fundamentally on the characteristics of an open and a closed system and what exactly differentiates the two. Now we can get a general definition of these two systems by flipping back to page 89 of the NCES reference handbook. Honing in here on the left column and more specifically in two, these two little areas that are giving us a general definition of a closed and an open thermodynamic system. Now back to our slide highlighting the characteristics of open and closed systems, let's highlight some key points that we must remember, both for this conceptual AIT problem that we're working, but also for the quantitative problems we will encounter in the thermodynamics section of the exam. Now an open system is one in which can exchange both mass and energy as heat or work with its surroundings. The mass within the system may or may not be constant, and the processes occurring in such a system take on flow type nature. Water pumps, engines, boilers, turbines, and heat exchangers are all examples of open systems. Most of the engineering machines and equipments that we will typically work with in the real world are actually open systems as well. Now a closed system, on the other hand, is one in which can exchange energy with its surrounding, but it does not exchange mass. The quantity of matter within the system remains fixed, and the system is described as a control mass system. But don't let these parameters pigeonhole you. Just because we have a closed control mass system does not mean that the physical nature and chemical composition of the mass that's within the system is not changing. Most all thermodynamic problems that we work includes the assessment of how matter changes between a series of states. For example, water may evaporate into a steam or steam may condense into a water. This is an important point to note. A chemical reaction may occur between two or more components of the closed system, while the mass of the system remains the same. Now, examples of a closed system are things like batteries, water in a tank, and a piston cylinder assembly.